Hey guys, this is James, and this is my monthly vlog for September. Uh, if you don't know, my monthly vlog is where I talk about some of the games I played, some of the TV shows I've watched, and in this particular uh, episode, we'll also talk about some life channel uh, discussion as well, because September was a weird month for me. Uh, but before we get to that, I just wanted to say I am uh, using a different... Uh, mode on my recorder here on my H2N instead of XY mode, which is like a 90 degree uh, microphone pickup. I'm using the mid sides and I'm hoping that helps with um, the audio quality for this video. So if you watch my other videos, uh, maybe if you can let me know if you think this sounds better or worse, uh, just leave a comment. But uh, let's get into uh, life discussion and channel discussion as well. So uh, the first thing I want to talk about is like kind of life stuff and it's kind of shitty. Um, I pretty much had uh, September is going to go down as probably the worth uh, the worst month for me this year. Um, and it's because uh, my oldest dog passed away like literally a week or two ago from today from this recording and it sucks it was it was kind of expected and also unexpected at the same time uh like months ago like 6 months i think by from now uh we uh we noticed he was having some problems we took him to a vet uh, I learned then that taking a dog to a vet is very expensive because you have to do a bunch of tests and stuff. I think I talked about this in a previous vlog. And we got some bad news. We found out he had something that wasn't really curable. Uh, it could be treated, but everything was so expensive. But for six months, I mean, he was losing weight dramatically. He was going blind the past like month or two. Uh, so, you know, it wasn't unexpected that, you know, his time was coming. But at the same time, he just, uh, to me, he still seemed like the same dog, the same, you know, mentality. He was a little bit more lethargic, uh, not moving around as much as he used to. But uh, I don't know. There's just so much of him still then there. That when he did pass, he, uh, one morning after breakfast, he just collapsed and didn't get back up. And, um, yeah, it, like I said, it was unexpected and expected at the same time. And yeah, it's been weird. I still, I have, uh, two other dogs, two younger dogs. Oh, well, really? They're my mom's dogs. And, uh. It's been weird. <laughs> uh, and I don't know. I just wanted to mention it because it was kind of shocking to me. And I, I kind of feel like it's, I feel a little better just getting it out there, you know, to a web series that no one will watch. <laughs> so, you know, I don't have to worry about any weird embarrassment crap. Eh, there's nothing embarrassing about this. But yeah, uh, God, I should have thought about how to end this subject. Uh, I'm going to miss that dog. Okay, so on a more lighter note, <laughs> I also did a couple other things for like the channel in general. Um... Pretty much when I record a catamagia, I noticed that I get this noise. Usually I, I, I uh, do like noise removal or noise reduction, I think it's called in Audacity, to try to get rid of some of the, you know, noise happening that the mic is picking up. And that's really good at taking out like the sound of my fan. Uh, right now it's kind of hottish. It's actually cooling down, but it's going to get hot again. Um, so I have to have a fan going or else I look disgusting. Like I do 
I probably look disgusting right now. I'm sweating in here, which is a surprise because it's been kind of cold today. But um, the noise reduction kind of does a good job with dealing with that noise. But I think my computer is making like a more higher pitch noise that's still coming through in the recording, especially when I'm talking. So I can't really get it out that easily. So um, what I did was I put a new fan into my computer. I added a fan, I should say. So I hope that helps with, you know, making sure the other fans don't rev up as hard because we have extra airflow going inside. Um, the other thing I did was I bought some sound paneling and I glued it all together to a poster board and I put that uh, in between my computer tower and where my microphone is. Hopefully I have pictures going up somewhere uh, showing you exactly what I mean. And I haven't had a chance to sit down and record Academagia yet. Um, that's kind of the game where you hear it the most because any other games I've recorded, like Heat Signature or Children of the Zodiacs, uh, it has that background music and stuff. So it's a, it's uh, you don't necessarily hear all the noise from like a ceiling fan and stuff as bad as you would with Academagia, which doesn't have music. Um, if this doesn't help, eh, I kind of wasted some money, but you know, that's not new and I'll just, I'll figure something out. I, what I can do is I can replace right now. I have a, a condenser microphone, a Behringer C3, and I can technically replace that with a dynamic microphone. I have a Behringer XM 1800. I believe it is. It's a $20 microphone though. And it doesn't sound bad, but it definitely doesn't sound as good as my condenser microphone. But uh, a dynamic microphone is going to pick up less noise and only focus directly at what it's pointed at, where a condenser microphone is going to pick up a whole room. Uh, so if I have to, I'll switch to that. But we are, it's October, uh, it's been a while since I've lived up north, so I don't know exactly when, but the temperatures should be dropping at some point. And hopefully by then I won't have to have my ceiling fan on. Hopefully my uh, computer case will run colder and stuff like that. But we'll see and, you know, we'll figure it out. I really don't want to replace my condenser microphone with my dynamic microphone uh, just because if I want to change out my uh, microphone, what I would rather do is get a newer microphone, a more expensive microphone, but that costs money. And well, that's, that's a thing, <laughs> but yeah, that's, so hopefully next time I record Academagia, um, it'll have better audio quality. It's really only stuff you hear if you have headphones on. Um, if you only listen to stuff through your speakers, you probably haven't heard the problems I've been hearing. <laughs> but yeah, hopefully things will get better. So I guess we'll uh, talk about the video games I've played during September. Uh, the first game I played was Tom Clancy's The Division. Uh, they were doing some kind of free weekend with uh, The Division, uh, and me and my friend decided to uh, play it together. Um, so... First off, I played The Division back when it went into, like, a beta before it released, like, a week before it got released, and that was the only other time I've played it, so I don't know exactly when these changes happened, but when we first played it, it seemed the beginning changed was different than what the beta one was. I don't know if the full game... I, I assumed that beta I played that came out a week before the game came out was pretty much the beginning of the game. But in, what it is now, it went into more of what the division is. I don't, it's like you are like sleeper agents living in cities who, when there's times of need, you're called and stuff like that. Um, I don't remember that when I played it oh so long ago. And I don't know, it 
it was interesting. Like a lot of it was stuff I remembered. Some of it was better. Um, the gunplay is fine. It's oh god, it, it I, we played this in the beginning of the month, and now I'm blanking. If it's a it's a third person game, yeah, yeah. I, for some reason, I was thinking if it was a first person, but no, it's a third person game. You are this person. Manhattan has been under like. <laughs> under quarantine because of some kind of money disease. I don't know. It's all kind of just crazy. And you're just an uh, agent who needs to go in and help people by mostly killing people <laughs> um, and shooting up gangs because that's the only thing you're good at. And, you know, I enjoyed what we played in the beginning of it, but as we were getting through, like, some of the story missions... It got to a point where it's like, I guess we should be grinding, like getting, doing uh, like side missions and gaining uh, levels. But I was enjoying the main missions because uh, they were, they were more fun. You were up against more difficult things. It was uh, more strategic while some of the side missions were, okay, you go to a place, you shoot up the place and you defend something. There was one side mission that was terrible i hated it it's you had to go to a place you pretty much had an audio log happen then you walk to the next uh place somewhere else in a building play the next audio log and you do this like five times and if you don't give a shit what the audio logs are saying it is horrendous to just go through um but yeah, I, I I enjoyed what I played. Uh, we went into the dark zone or whatever the zone is where there's a PvP and we pretty much just got destroyed. <laughs> like everyone there was high levels with great loot who were pretty much just there to kill people. Uh, but that's what happens when a game's in, been out for so long. Uh and the game was also on sale for $20, which is pretty good. Um, and me and my friend were thinking about it until, like, the last day we played. It was just like, well, we I think I got my fill from the shooting. The story modes were starting to become really difficult, uh, We, which meant we would have had to start grinding on things, which wasn't necessarily what we wanted to do. We wanted to, you know, progress through the story together. And then, I don't know, just, I felt like I got my fill of the base game just from playing it those couple days. And if I was going to get the Division, I think I would, if it was $20 for that and the DLC, then I might have done it because some of the DLC stuff looked very interesting. Uh, from what I've seen in the past. But yeah, uh, we decided not to get it, and I'm kind of... I'm good with that. I don't think I would have played much more of that game if we even did get it. But it's a cool game. I don't know. So the second game I played was Heat Signature, which is uh, this really cool kind of hotline Miami uh, type of game but it takes place in space on spaceships. I did a let's look at video, my shitty version of a quick look, and I quite like this game a lot. Pretty much you are like, you play, you have a set of characters. Each character has personal goals, like um, I need to rescue my daughter from the Federation, or I need to... Uh, kill the officer who tortured my partner from the, the off-world companies. Uh, stuff like that. There's like four different sectors. I I, I wish I uh, learned the names of them. And they all have like their own like set of stuff. Like I believe the only one I remember is like the off-world uh, uh, the off-world um, group. <laughs> um uh, so if you're ever doing something against them, uh, they only have um, weapons that uh, don't do don't make you bleed. They they're not guns; they're concussion um, guns. So they only 
make you unconscious. Uh, and all of them have their own little things about them. Uh, it's a really fun game. Pretty much you uh, pick a character you play as. You start out with four. You go, you do missions, either killing someone, rescuing someone, hijacking a ship, stuff like that, stealing um, uh, projects from uh, ships. There's no on-planet stuff. It's only space stations and spaceships that you're ever walking on. And you go in and you have to find a way to achieve your objective. So if you have to kill a certain person, uh, it's up to you how you get to that person and kill them. Uh, you can maybe kill everyone on your way to that person. Or maybe you can find a way to teleport around uh, using special equipment to get to that person. Maybe they're in a room with a window. You break the window. They fly off into space while you fly off into space. You remote control your uh, pod ship to come grab you as you watch the other person just die uh, die in space. It's, it's a fun game that feels very tactical because at any time you can just pause and just see what's going on, line up a shot, and or figure out the best possible way to do something. And it's, it's just a lot of fun, and I'll probably be playing that um for a while actually like the i don't think there's any other games i'm going to be playing really uh other than when south park comes out this month uh so probably my main game is going to be heat signature until i beat it it's a really fun game i think it's awesome go check out my video or go check other people's videos if you hate me <laughs> um and go check it out because i i do think it's a really cool game so the last game I've played during September is Fortnite Battle Royale. So if you don't know, um, Fortnite, which is a game that was announced years ago and took forever to actually come out to a point where people kept asking, is this still a thing? Um, well, that came out earlier this year in early access, but you have to pay for it. And when it does come out, I think it's going to be free to play. So... I don't know why you would pay for it unless you really, really, really want to play it. Um, well, they did this Battle Royale mode, which is pretty much PUBG, um, a PUBG mode, pretty much. And if you don't know, players, player underground, players unknown battlegrounds is a pretty much one of those games where you get uh, thrown onto an island. Um, a, the space is slowly closing up with this like force field uh, uh, circle. So you have to keep moving while looking for guns and supplies to take out everyone else. You drop with a hundred other people and you try to be the last person uh, staying alive. So Fortnite did its Battle Royale, which is pretty much that, except because it's Fortnite, you can also build things. Now, this is the mode they put out for free, so I was kind of interested in Fortnite um, till I found out it was like $40 to get into it right now, and it's supposed to be a free-to-play game when it does come out, you know, version 1.0. <laughs> um, so me and my friend went to go check it out because A, I was interested in Fortnite, and B, I was interested in uh, PUBG, but I just don't. I don't have the money for it. Well, I, I could buy it if I wanted to, but I just, there are other games I would rather buy than PUBG, but it's still a game if, you know, if I was making revenue, uh, if I was making money, <laughs> it would probably have been a game I would have purchased by, ma by now. So in Fortnite, it's pretty much exactly that. You can build stuff. Me and my friend has been doing squads, uh, the weird thing is in squads, you can set it up. So it's just, you know, a squad is usually four people, but you can set it up with two and not fill up the other two slots because you kind of want to be communicating with people. And I don't think there's any in-game voice chat and I don't really want to invite, you know, ran randoms to a discord channel. 
Um, so it's weird kind of me and my friend being in a squad of two running into a bunch of squads of threes and fours, but hopefully they put in like a duos mode at some point. And kind of that's the thing, this whole, the whole battle Royale thing just feels very last minute because the, the guns feel a little too overpowering. Like shotguns are way too strong. They can like knock you out in a single hit. Um, I, there are times when I like walked into a building, a person had a rifle and I instantly go down. I didn't even hear the gunshots. Now that could be lag. That could be a bunch of things, but I, I don't know. It just feels off. Like, I think they really need to work on um, maybe some of the damages the guns put out. Um, or maybe give the players more health or something. I don't know. I, I enjoyed what I played of it. I don't know how much more I'm going to play of it. It's interesting, but I kind of need to see it get... Like, I don't know. If the next update doesn't do something like say, hey, we balance the weapon damage or something to that effect, I don't know how much more I'll be playing it. I uh, never won a ma uh, match, uh, either solo or with my friend. Uh, we've gotten to top tens and stuff, and that's always fun. But I, yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. I, I don't know. I'm still, I can go either way on it. Uh, and the other thing is it's not on Steam or anything. You need to get the uh, Epic Launcher, which having another freaking uh, game launcher on my system, my computer system just sucks. Oh, but I think this is out on PlayStation 4 as well. So if you want to try it out on a console, maybe it's better. Maybe it's not. I don't know. <laughs> I would check. I, I, I think I don't have PlayStation Plus right now, though. I would have checked it out. If I still have PlayStation Plus. I don't know. If that changes, maybe I will. And I'll do a, another segment in a vlog or something talking about it. But yeah, that's Fortnite Battle Royale. It's PUBG but free. And runs not as great. But, and, well, I don't even know how great PUBG runs. So they're both early access. Okay, so that was all the games I played. Let's get into the one television show I watched this month, which was Rick and Morty. Uh, Rick and Morty is, if you don't know, that's really weird. Um, it's this cartoon on Adult Swim. It's uh, the first time someone tried to explain it to me, they said it was, um, oh, what's that movie? Uh, with uh, back to, it's like Back to the Future. Uh, but everyone's dysfunctional. <laughs> um, pretty much it, the two main characters, Rick, who is a uh, elderly scientist who can travel different universes and different planets and all this stuff. He lives with his daughter and her husband who have two children, one of which is Morty, so Rick's grandson. And Rick takes Morty out on adventures, and they do terrible things. And Rick is a alcoholic, crazy person who just is insane. <laughs> I it's oh my god it's it's a comedy show. It's a cartoon. It's fun. I it's very bingeable though. I tend to find a lot of the things I watch is very bingeable. But in particular, I felt it was kind of easy to just be like, next episode. <laughs> oh, that was funny. I should really go to sleep next episode. <laughs> but no, really, now I need to go to sleep next episode. Um, and <laughs> and uh, it's, uh, it's a lot of fun. I... There's a, I watched season one and two, season three came out recently, but it's not on Hulu yet. And I don't really have cable. I technically have cable, but I don't like using it. Um, 
so I, I probably have to wait till uh, season three comes out on Hulu, and I can't wait because season two ends really interestingly, and I kind of want to see how that uh, gets played out. Uh, I think you can also watch episodes on Adult Swim, but my biggest problem with that, like any other uh, TV station that does, um, you know, lets you watch episodes on their website, it's limited time, so I don't like being told, oh, you have five days to watch this, and then it's gone. And I don't, I don't know if Adult Swim does that, but I know a lot of them do that. And the second problem is, for like the latest episodes, you have to um, have a uh, a channel, uh, a cable subscription. You have to sign in with your cable account, which I don't even know what that is, <laughs> really. <laughs> so I'm just going to wait till it pops up on Hulu and I'll enjoy season three. But season one and two, really great. Um, if you've ever watched the first episode of Rick and Morty and just went, oh, this isn't for me, watch the second and third episode at least. Just it, because to me, uh, season one, episode one is the worst episode. I meant to rewatch it to make sure um, I still felt that way. But the first time I watched it, when my friends like recommended Rick and Morty to me, the first time I watched that first episode and went, ooh, I, mm, I don't know. No, I don't think this is for me. This is, he keeps burping. It's terrible. Like, it's really grinding my gears. The burping gets better. <laughs> um, uh, and then, like, when I decided, like, I watched season one, like, months, maybe, like, even a year ago. Um, and I decided, but I never watched season two for some reason. I just didn't make the time. So I decided I'll rewatch season one and season two. And even on my second viewing of episode one, season one, um, I was just like, yeah, this one's not great. The second episode and the third episode are much better and gives a better idea of what's going on. And if you watch the uh, those and you still don't like it, then I guess Rick and Morty isn't for you. But I think the show is really good. I really enjoy it. And I think uh, people should go check it out if they already haven't. I mean, you all probably already have. Like, I feel like I see a lot of Rick and Morty stuff on the internet and stuff. So I don't know. <laughs> Okay, so that was pretty much everything for September. The one television show, the couple games, and depressing life stuff. <laughs> As for October, what I'm hoping to play and stuff, um, I think I said it, said it earlier, uh, the new South Park game should be coming out this month. I'm going to go play that on the PC. I might do a video on that. I don't know, but I'll definitely talk about it in the vlog. I'm very interested to see how that game plays out. I enjoyed the Stick of Truth. I'm kind of curious if my Stick of Truth character will be imported uh, directly into uh, the Fractured Butthole. <laughs> Damn it. Um, but And I'm actually interested to make a new character because of the whole... The difficulty setting is your race. So... If you're black, it's a higher difficulty. Um, it says it doesn't affect combat difficulty. All it does is affect like how much money you make and how other people um, interact with you, which is interesting. I don't know how well that's going to work, but I kind of want to check it out for myself, so I'll probably make a second character. And I think you can actually be female in this uh, game as well. In the first game, you couldn't be female. Or it was heavily implied that you were male. Um, I don't think there's any other games I'm really looking forward to in October because the South, uh, South Park game is 60 bucks and that's a lot of money. <laughs> um, so I don't think I'll be picking up any other like games unless they're like maybe 10, maybe $20, but even then probably not. Uh, as for television shows that I want to watch, I meant to watch Death Note, uh, the Netflix series, uh, not series, movie, 
the m- original movie, the live action Americanization of Death Note. I meant to watch that this month, uh, September, um, but with my dog passing, I kind of didn't want to watch anything, especially something I know that I'm not going to like. Um, so I'm hoping to watch it during October and I'm going to sit down with like a notebook while I watch it because Death Note is one of my favorite series and I'll probably talk about it in the next vlog. It'll probably be its own little segment. Um, uh, I also want to watch the Jaden Smith, um, Netflix anime thing, uh, Neo Yokio, I believe it's called. Um, I saw the trailer for that and it looks very interesting. I've seen some people have put up like images with, you know, titles, uh, not title, uh, captions on them and it looks very interesting. It looks fun. Um, I, there is one thing that makes me go, eh, I don't know if I like it is, um, while watching the trailer, Jaden Smith voice to me, it's been a while since I've watched the trailer, I should say, but my initial reaction was, uh, Jaden Smith's, uh, voice is very, um, uh, clashes with other, the other voices. It feels out of place. Uh, maybe, maybe that's all in my head. And when I watch this show, uh, I probably won't even realize that. I, I, I think I've complained about voice acting and stuff like Digimon Frontier. Um, and I got used to those voices by the end of that. That was also a 50 episode series. So, eh. <laughs> you kind of had to get used to it. <laughs> Um, and I don't know if, what else I'll watch. I think that's pretty much the two things I'm going to push myself to watch. Neo Yokio and, um, Death Note. Maybe I'll watch something else. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how I even feel. Like, lately I haven't been feeling like doing much, in all honesty. Um, so, let's see. Video games, TV shows. Oh, I actually ordered something, um... Uh, it's a book. <laughs> we know how good I am with books. <laughs> um, I I found out uh, a web comic I read, which is Cucumber Quest. They are putting out um, physical books, and the first one comes out October tenth. And I really like Cucumber Quest. It's a very cute web comic. Um, so I I I kind of want to support it by buying this physical thing and it'll i i i can't wait to reread that web comic now i was thinking about it for a while like uh should i should i re- start rereading this but now that it's a physical book i i can't wait to come it to come in and for me to read it um so yeah and web uh web comics it's gonna be a physical book so a comic is kind of more <laughs> A uh, graphic novel is more um, my speed than actual books, probably. I actually found a new webcomic, and I brew, uh, breezed through, like, the hundreds of strips it had. <laughs> so I, I'll probably read that easily through October. Uh, but I think that's everything that's happening in October that I'm going to aim for. Um, I'll probably talk even more about um, the sound paneling I put up and stuff next month as well, because by then I should have recorded some more Academagia and other, uh, other, um, uh, videos. So yeah, that should be everything for the month. If you watched all this, thank you. You are awesome. I also think you're non-existent going by the views on my last video. Um, but Hey, if you, if you're a real person who've watched all this, thank you. You're awesome. Uh, maybe go check out my other videos if you already haven't. Uh, you might like uh, some of my other stuff I do, like Academagia or my uh, Let's Look at Heat Signature. And I've done other things, probably. <laughs> I'm trying to think, but they're all gone in my head. Uh, and yeah, I will guess I'll see you guys next month for the next vlog or whatever video you guys watch. Bye.